Steve Clifford speaks on the LaMelo ball injury and how he is shut down for the rest of the season. He also had comments on Mark Williams. What do we make of those comments? We'll talk about it today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz we live. We live. We It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods. And that includes YouTube, where if you're watching us on YouTube, you can clearly see that the background is very different for both of us. I've never had this background before. I don't think Doug's ever had that background. And you've had a few, whether it be your office. Okay, you have. Like I I, I usually see the, the, the kitchen. I saw the little Tykes goal when that was happening, like the Christmas tree where half the lights were working and half weren't. That's the background that I remember if you've had a makeshift background. Yeah, the little tice goal, that's where I sharpen up my game. A lot of people think that's for my baby. It's not. That's where I hoop it up. Uh, Mm. This this used to be my office. This used to be the set of the Locked on Hornets podcast uh, before it went to producer Katie. I've done a few episodes from here since then, though, uh, before I moved uh, downtown to the uh, set where, where we set up now. I have not. This is very plain. You get to see a little bit of the control room here in a studio at WFNZ's uh, little side studio here, and so this is going to be a road game for me as well. Oh, you're and on that's the radio. Why we're having to do a little bit. You're on the radio. I'm on the radio. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. I am. Cool. I'm on the radio. WFNZ twelve yeah. to three. Listen to me every single weekday, <laughs> and you can find your work, Doug's work, on everyhornetsboxscore.com. Uh, again, everyhornetsboxscore.com. You can go there, and also you can find information for his sub text alongside his sub stack. We got a lot to get to today, Doug, because Lamelo Ball. We broke it in the last episode. Shams Sharant, we didn't break it. We talked about <laughs> how it was broken. I'm not going to take credit away from Shams. Shams Sharani of the Athletic. He broke during our recording of that episode that Lamelo Ball was going to be shut down for the rest of the season. It wasn't a surprise. We expected it. The problem was we just didn't know when it was going to happen because they refused to shut him down for the remainder of the season. Despite every single game injury report, he was listed as out. It finally happened. And Steve Clifford talked about that. And Doug, I know you weren't comforted by those comments from Steve Clifford on him speaking about Lamelo's injury. Well, we're just not living in a land of like timelines or guarantees. And so when you are in sort of that liminal state where you can't look at a calendar and say, okay, well, we expect them to do X, Y, and Z by a certain date, then yeah, I think there is some concern. Look, I said on on yesterday's episode, and I've said it a couple times now, that I haven't heard anything to this point that would suggest that what LaMelo Ball is dealing with in terms of the ankle is like career threatening. And while I don't think that that's what Steve Clifford was in any way insinuating, when he says something like, look, the ankle is not responding, that's like, it's not, that's not saying it's career threatening, but it's certainly concerning that they are trying to ramp him up to play. And then you've got Miles Bridges saying, look, if LaMelo could go out there and play at 80%, he would. And so, you know, if you take that and say, well, okay, it's not as if he's not 100%. It's that he's not even 80%. I mean, yeah, I I take these things and I go, okay, there's there's something serious that that we're dealing with here with LaMelo Ball. And and, uh, we we don't really have any indication as to like, well, you know, he'll be fine during the summer. You know, we're really just waiting till the summer so that he can get fully healthy. I mean, I don't have any indication of that. And I also don't think that there's any guarantee at this point that he's not going to have to go back under the knife. Like if it's not, if he, if he had surgery and it's not responding necessarily, then, you know, is surgery a future option is another surgery for LaMelo ball, a future option. That's the, that's the worry. And there are a couple things to take away. Like, look, I don't, there are a couple people that are questioning whether this is LaMelo's camp, having him sit out the rest of the season, has he been 100%, but he's just so worried about getting re-injured? There are people that do think that. Maybe there's nothing that can sway you from thinking that because you got to that part where there wasn't maybe a whole lot of evidence anyway, so it's not like 
lack of evidence on the other side is going to sway you, right? Like Steve Clifford and Miles Bridges both said he's been doing everything he can. It's just the ankle isn't responding. And then Miles, you mentioned some of the comments just to read it directly. He says, yeah, it sucks. Mello loves basketball. He loves playing the game of basketball. If he has an injury that affects him that much, it definitely affects him because if he could come out here and play 80%, He would, so it's tough having him out. I miss playing with him for sure, but his health is what matters the most, end quote. So I don't know if you're getting that same tone where I know there are some people that think it's his camp, even if he's 100%, but Miles is telling you, nah, man, he's really not good enough to go. Steve Clifford was telling you, yeah, he's close. That was about a what, like a month ago, and now here he is shut down for the remainder of the season. I don't know what it is either. We don't have that information on just how bad it is via the hardware in his foot. If he is 80 or 90 percent and he really could go out there or how much of it is the team that actually wants to sit him out. But it sucks all the way around that LaMelo isn't going to play another ball game at all and is actually going to play less than he did last year when he posted 36 games. Well, you know, you and I were supposed to talk about this yesterday, but we had some technical difficulties. You had to go do your radio show. And so I, I got on solo and said that, you know, in the in the absence of of messaging or in a situation where you have mixed messages about something, people are going to fill in those gaps or they're going to make a decision about which one of those mixed messages they would like to believe. So I think a right. factor in this is that, the organization has been a little bit vague about what's exactly going on until up to this point. Now they're being a little bit more forthright with like, hey, you know, he's, he's going to be out for the season and the ankle is not responding and so on and so forth. We haven't heard a ton from the mellow ball himself saying, look, uh, this is this is what the situation is. If I if I could be out there, I would be out there. So, you know, I, I don't I don't blame anyone in, in this particular situation for thinking one thing or the other, because I don't think the the messaging around this has been particularly well executed. No, it hasn't. And by the way, like that word responding, I, I know that worries you. Yeah, it should. It worries me as well. It, it seems like Steve Clifford's go-to word, if we're really to try to dissect this, because I remember when he hopped on with Kyle Bailey, this was a couple of months ago when he was speaking about Cody Martin's injury and we were all waiting for him to come back. Eventually he would, <laughs> But he did say every time he ramps it up, there's some kind of fallback and it just doesn't work out. I don't know if he used the word responding. I don't know how much we really want to dissect whether he did. It just feels like this has happened with a few players and that's concerning. And if you'll remember, man, this happened a lot with Gordon Hayward. Like this is what leads to some of the unfounded opinions. But you could point to that if you wanted to and speculate about the training staff because that's not something I feel comfortable doing. But it does seem to happen with this organization a lot. Gordon Hayward, when he's expected to come back, he doesn't. And then he sits out a little longer. Cody Martin, he's expected to come back at some point. We don't get all that much information. And then he's missing a lot more time than we expect. Now it's happening with LaMelo. Now it's happening with Mark Williams. And it's frustrating that not only is it hurting your star players, your older players that are good now but aren't a part of the foundation, Doug, now it's affecting the foundation. And that's where it really hits home. Yeah, the the foundation, the guy who makes your offense go, uh, one of your you know very few pieces that is all star capable is all has all NBA potential, and so so it is devastating. I will say like, while I don't think that people's opinions around the training staff are like. I guess founded in in the way that like, oh, well, I know the person that's on the training staff and I know that they're not up to snuff versus this person on the training staff. This is a results based business. Like if you're if you're a head coach and you lose a ton of basketball games, then you get fired. And, and you know, so I, I think that people look at the situation, they go, look, the Hornets have been mired in injury after injury. And how I don't know how much of that to put on the training staff versus to put on putting on, you know, well, it's a haunted house and they've just had some some terrible luck. But at the end of the day, it's a results based business. And if this new ownership is evaluating where they can make changes and where they can make impact, I think it's more than founded to say, hey, you know, let's try to turn this training situation around and maybe some new faces, some new ideas uh, would be a good way to do that. Yeah, who knows? I have zero clue. But all I know is that we continue to drop like flies, and now it's affecting LaMelo more so. (laughs) And we still don't know about Mark Williams. You got one final thought? Well, you said that we didn't break the news, but the news broke us, right? We didn't break the news, but the news broke us.
all the listeners can also subscribe to that theory. Let's move on. Coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Maybe we dig in a little bit more to the Mark Williams comments from Steve Clifford as well. And I want to get into how this news about LaMelo, how does that affect how the Hornets operate in the offseason going into next year? All of that coming up next on Locked On Hornets. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. More Locked On Hornets ahead. So. Before we go to the Mark comments from Steve Clifford and more on his injury, Doug, it, it did have me thinking, right? Because we've talked a lot about Vasa Micic, about Trey Mann. Not only are they vying for what is another spot of the rotation next year, the sixth or seventh man coming off of the bench, but, man, I mean, we're talking about some real important backcourt depth. Like, they're going to put a premium on that. My question is, do they put so much of a premium on it with some cap space they're going to be able to work with that you even look to bolster that backup point guard position even more. Like as well as Vasa Micic has played for the most part, I certainly think better than what we expected after we traded for him. Do you want to shore up that position even more? Because now you're looking at LaMelo playing 35% of the games the last two years. You can't feel great about him holding up next season. Do you go after the big boy backup point guards? Like anytime I listen to a national NBA podcast, it, Tyus Jones is at this level where he's so underrated that he's not underrated anymore. And by the way, I don't know if he's even paid like it. Like he's pay, he's playing for Washington on one more year on his contract. It will end after the season is over. And that's at 14 million, right? So if he's looking for more, because Tyus is always the guy, should this team go after some backcourt depth and trade for Tyus Jones? Do the Hornets just say, hey, we have some cap space. We have a star point guard that we're not willing to give up on. But, man, we need some insurance, and we're willing to pay a premium for it. Do you go after the Tyus Joneses of the world, whoever is in that neighborhood, and pay, like, $16 million? Like, do you pay top dollar to make sure you have somebody when LaMelo was out that you can still have a decent enough driver? Because if Michich or Mann, you feel good, but you don't feel great. Like, do you need to feel great about that position? That's what I'm wondering heading into the offseason. Yeah. I'll give you a straight answer. Yes. Like, <laughs> okay. if you, it, no, if you go bargain hunting, if you go to the Walmart $5 DVD bin again, right before training camp starts for your backup or your third point guard, then you're not serious about making the playoffs. I mean, that's been my whole thing for the past couple of seasons. The Hornets have not been serious about getting to the getting back to the playoffs, and you can tell because their point guard depth has been weak and because their center rotation has not been an NBA-level center rotation, and they've left it. Look, I mean, there are only a certain number of roster spots, right? And, and there's only a certain amount of money, although I hope this version of the Hornets is willing to spend a little bit more of that money, get a little bit closer to that you know, tax cutoff or whatever. So, but th there's only so much you can do. And so you probably do have to invest in certain things and not invest as fully in others. But I think backup point guards, certainly with LaMelo's health issues being what they are, I, I think it's going to be vital. Another name to watch, I think, is Dennis Schroeder uh, because he has a relationship with uh, Jeff Peterson, the, the new EVP, the, the new GM, head of basketball operations, whatever you want to call him. Uh, they have a relationship, prior relationship, and so Schroeder could be a name to watch too. But you got to bring some either d defensive toughness and or uh, at other positions, you've got to find some more shooting. They've got to replace what what Lamelo Ball does. Like we, I think we always focus on the playmaking because you know his his physics breaking passes, the way he pushes the pace, like it's amazing. And offensively, that does transform their game. They've got a little bit of that with Micic, okay. 
But what they don't have with Michich is an ability to knock down a three-point shot and a deep three-point shot. That's what made the Hornets offense so powerful a couple of seasons ago is LaMelo's ability to stretch the floor and create driving lanes and space at the rim for other people because he because defenses had to uh, respect his ability to hit deep threes. And so, you know, they've got to go out and find those those diamonds in the rough too. So, yeah, like with Schroeder, you're talking about one more year left on his deal after this one. So if you acquired him, it would have to be via trade. With Tyus Jones, you would just sign him in free agency. And I think, Tyus, if you're talking about the shooting, because I thought about this too, right? Like we're looking at paying premium dollar for a backup point guard. We'll have some cap space, cap space to the point where, hey, if – you need a pony up, then maybe you just do it. He's going to be the guy that probably makes more than some of these other backup PGs. And if you want to pay him 14 or whatever, they might just do it. But he also fits that build a little more. He averages seven assists with the Wizards. He's a good three-point shooter. We know how control he's in, how much control he's in. And it feels like, hey, if you wanted to run Tyus and LaMelo on the floor together, maybe those lineups could work out. Like So that's why I wonder. It, it's I don't want to get tied down totally to one free agent but he is the guy that fits the best I mean Markel Fultz doesn't really have the game that LaMelo does even though he's going to be an unrestricted free agent who does Monte Morris not as dynamic so Monte as much as he's going to take care of the ball and he'll facilitate and you can trust him he's not the scorer that Tyus Jones might be I just that that's the guy I'm looking at it just are you just like okay bleep this man LaMelo might get hurt we're not going to trade him because we need to make sure that we exhaust every opportunity he's our star player but when he does go down we're going to be more than ready it's actually going to be hey we're cool we can survive and maybe even thrive without him on the court let's pay top dollar it's it's a question that I have and we'll see if Jeff Peterson values that enough yeah I mean and we'll that, see about it for sure I mean that's what uh, even though in 15 16 when they got Lynn that was a little bit of like a buy low hope that that turned out really well. And it did because and Lynn it, was, and it did. Yeah, you're right. was on his last leg. And I think what we're asking for here is something different. It's a little bit more like, hey, you got to go out and find a guy who you're not rolling the dice on completely, who has a skill set that might not be on the rise, you know, but is but is somebody that you, you can count on for a, a particular piece of the thing that you need. And we'll see. We'll see how serious this organization is about getting to the playoffs because – and here's the thing, too. They they went into the trade deadline. They came away with picks. But what they also came away with is you traded some high-dollar uh, assets and traded them for guys that are on rookie contracts and Davies Bertans who you can reroute that money. That that's It's not as – that $16 million a year contract is not really a $16 million a year contract. So you got flexibility. And the question is, are you going to use that flexibility to stack your roster with players that can deal with some of the injuries that you've had and sustain some of that through an 82-game season? Or are you going to sit back in your laurels and, and hope that these pieces, by the way, that you didn't even think were going to be as good as they were, right? The owners have admitted right. as much. They were like, oh, we didn't know that Mijic and Mann and Grant Williams. Were. So are you going to then – are you going to fall into the false idea that that performance is going to maintain – uh, or are you going to look at what's happened over the past couple of weeks and deal with that reality, which is that you need more, more, more if you want to compete in the Eastern Conference? All right, let's go to the next segment, talking more injuries, the injuries that you speak of. Coming up next on Locked on Hornets. Not only is LaMelo shut down for the rest of the season, we don't know about Mark Williams, but it doesn't sound promising. We do know about Cody Martin and Seth Curry. They're not going to play another game this year. We'll get to more of that on the other side. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. And gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch high definition touchscreen informant system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder is also here and it has room for up to eight people, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability. With the 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there 
to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels, too, so that it can deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands and all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment gaming, travel, cooking videos too. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. More Locked On Hornets ahead. <coughs> I got one more thing for you on LaMelo Ball. Okay. We just can't quit him. We can't talk. Uh, we can't stop talking about him. We wanted to move on to Mark Williams and some of the other injuries, but Lamelo, he's the straw, right? We got to talk about what stirs the drink. Doug, you had another point on the Lamelo injury. I think, in a way, if if the ankle does return to a hundred percent, all of this could actually be really great for Lamelo Ball. Because you have you have a lot of folks out there right now that are in the national media and fans and haters that look at LaMelo Ball when he came into the league. They look at the fancy clothes. They look at the cars. They look at the way he plays on the court with so much joy, but also with so much abandon. You know, like he, he plays a little fast and loose with the basketball. They look at all of that and they go, This guy is not a serious basketball player. He's not as serious as Brandon Miller is about being one of the greatest basketball players that that, being the greatest basketball players that he could be, much less being one of the greatest basketball players. He's not serious about winning championships. And so I think he he is in a situation right now where he, whether he wants to admit it or not, whether he's really facing it, is facing a sort of career fork in the road. This can go one of two re- two ways. His career is is threatened to be taken away from him. And so this could be great in that he responds to that and and doesn't lose what makes LaMelo LaMelo, but and I think some of those like him being unserious is a little overblown, but it's not enti- it's not entirely out of nowhere. And so look, the 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 all-star him being an all-star right now is not even like a, a consideration. He, you know, he was in a lot of commercials early on in his career. I haven't seen him do many commercials lately, okay? All of that is sitting all of that is sitting and waiting, but he's got to now reclaim it. And if he can get back to 100%, I think that could be the best thing for his future career. I can picture the next 30 for 30 playing that in the background to a montage of LaMelo getting ready and working out in the gym. (laughs) And I believe Doug Branson's voice should be the thing that is the liaison to the 30 for 30 doc. Damn, if I I had known I was going to be that brilliant, I would have worn something ridiculous. I would have worn the B costume or I would have worn the big dub hat so that Mm -hmm. they would have had to put me on 30-30 with that on. I would have loved to have seen it. (laughs) You want to talk about Mark Williams? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Because Mark Williams, there might be a 30 for 30 on him too. Maybe just the whole Charlotte Hornets, how they couldn't get healthy. The house that was haunted. It's the story of your 2023-2024 Charlotte Hornets. Because we're dealing with it with Mark too. Steve Clifford said he's doing everything he can. The back hasn't responded. I, Doug, on the world-famous WFNZ text line, I do radio in Charlotte. You, oh, really? you were asking earlier. I just wanted to let you know that I still do. The text line continues to ask, hey, do you know what the injury is for Mark? And I keep telling them, no, no, I don't. It's a lower back contusion at first. Now it's just a back injury. So 
I don't know for sure about a lot of stuff with this team. Like that, that seems to be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm not an insider. Like all I do is talk about the squad. Sometimes I know inside stuff and a lot of times I don't. And this is another one of those times where I don't, I have no clue what the exact injury is on Mark Williams. All I know is that it's a back injury. I'm not sure if they're trying to avoid surgery. It would make sense because of the history of big men and back uh, surgery. It doesn't necessarily go well, but all I know is that I don't expect Mark Williams to go out there. Like, they've taken their time on telling you who's going to be out for the rest of the year. First, they told us it was Cody Martin and Seth Curry. They wait a day. Then they tell us it's LaMelo Ball. Are we going to get the news on Mark in the next couple of days? I don't know. I would think that you would just let us know about all the players, right? Like maybe you want to divvy it up. I'm not sure why you would want to prolong this, but they might. And I fully expect Mark Williams to not play a game the rest of the way. I I can't believe that. The Charlotte Hornets are confounding medical science. Like it's just beyond beyond all of the world's knowledge on medicine to figure out what's going on with these Hornets right now. Uh, we just talked about whether they should get a new training staff. I think they should just hire House MD. Like this, I mean, these medical mysteries that the Charlotte Hornets are dealing with right now. It's unbelievable, man. It's amyloidosis. Yeah, if you watch House, that everything at first is amyloidosis, but it's never amyloidosis. So it's always, that's the first thing you throw in. Have we tried amyloidosis? Yeah, let's try for it. Nope, it's not. It's actually this obscure bug that bits you overseas, and that's why you're diseased here. It's never amyloidosis. That's what you should take away from this pod. Now, my favorite was, you know, when they they would break into people's houses and it ended up being like a, like a bad baloney or something that that gave this person, uh, you know, they, they, they were like uh, somebody out of the ex- exorcist. Their head was spinning 360, vomiting. Bad baloney. Anyway. No um, more baloney training staff. We fixed it. You're welcome. Get on the court. I said it's difficult. Yeah, I have people asking me all the time, what's the update on Mark? What's the deal? I don't know. I wish I knew. It's bad yeah. that we don't. It's bad that they're they're missing uh, what was advertised as a core piece, as somebody that Steve Clifford valued tremendously with his ability to chase guys out of the paint. I think, you know, honestly, it's been pretty admirable that they've been able to defend it all without him. You know, I think you got to give it up to Steve for that, to, to be able to – because, look, and yeah. Nick Richards, too, for being able to hold down the paint and play a lot of minutes. And then – because when they you – then know, they go to Grant and then they go to Poku and they do get hammered a little bit when they go to Grant and Poku. But uh, Nick Richards has done a great job as well, um, and he's on a cheap deal. But they've got – I think they've got to evaluate the center position the same way that they've got to evaluate the the depth at point guard and, and not assume that that Mark Williams is going to make a full recovery and be that – sort of fringe all-star center that you thought he might be when when you projected him uh, in the draft. And maybe in the future, here's a hot tip for the new new owners, if you have two first-round picks, uh, you should use them and, and maybe use them on multiple players from the same position because, hey, here's the thing, you never know what's going to happen. So all of this first round, well, what do they need? What do they need? That, that, that kills me. It kills me when we have those conversations, especially about 18 and 19-year-olds, because you don't even know what they're going to be, much less what you're going to need in a few seasons. So, anyway. (sighs) (laughs) Yeah, no. No, you're right. And also, like, we know, too, that the season is officially over for Cody Martin and Seth Curry. Seth Curry had the ankle injury as well. And, you know, Seth Curry, like, it's – that one's pretty straightforward. We know the injury, the timetable to return is longer than the season is. And so they're going to sit him out the rest of the way. Cody Martin continues to be, it, he signed the contract. It was like $7 million a year. And Cody Martin is going to be on the last year of his deal coming into this next season. And as much as it was a fair contract, like I thought it was totally fine. Thought it was okay here. Defense, maybe he becomes something a little more offensively, but he's just not been on the floor either. And it's, every single one of these guys now we're talking about something serious enough three of the four guys that have been shut down or we think are going to be shut down are dealing with something serious and so you're right like i it, it sucks because cody martin really fought his way to that three-year contract he shot well from three in his last year of his rookie deal um but he just can't stay on the floor and another example of a guy that every time he ramps it up it, he he doesn't come back in time that you think he will. Now, you know they're doing a lot right now to get players to play more, and and that's not what I mean. I you know Cody Cody Martin is legitimately injured and has been a lot. Okay, 
but they're doing a lot to get players to play more and so they're making adjustments to like the mvp race you've got to play a certain number of games so on and so forth i think during the next competition committee meeting and during the next cba they should discuss a red shirt system like if you don't play you know, 90% of your contract, you, you just have to play an extra year. <laughs> Maybe you're compensated somewhat for that extra year, uh, but, you you know, you got to take a redshirt year. The, the Hornets, it's unfair that they are going to get through so much of this contract with Cody Martin for so little on-the-court time. Uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. I will give you uh, this interesting quote here from Clifford uh, via Sam Purley on Twitter, at Sam underscore Purley. Uh, Clifford said on why the ball movement sometimes stops, which has been a big issue for this Hornets offense yep. uh, that's that's being led by Miles Bridges and Brandon Miller, who are not point guards. And he said, quote, shot pass drive decisions. We're not locked into moving the defense, or maybe a guy feels like he got a matchup that he can take more advantage of. Okay, here's a follow-up quote from Clifford, uh, who says, uh, what Sam asked him about not having ball movers like Cody Martin and Seth Curry, who are also hurt. And he says, quote, guys ultimately have a way they play. That's why they're in the league. You want to have a balance of guys that are aggressive and looking to score and guys that are just willing to move the ball, unquote. And to me, yeah. that's blaring lights, Miles Bridges, right? Miles Bridges has a way that he plays in the league, which is you give him the ball, he's going to put his head down, drive, try to finish at the rim or he's going to take an open three-point shot. He is not a ball mover, He's been, fo- but he's been forced into a position where he's had the ball in his hands probably way too much for what his, his skill set would allow him to do in terms of making other good plays for other people. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that just really sums up what, what the loss of LaMelo Ball, but also Seth Curry and Cody Martin have meant to this team. When I, when I was at that one, it was either the Orlando or Milwaukee game, and Steve Clifford was talking about the lack of shot selection and, and the lack of quality in their shot selection. I asked him about it again, saying, hey, did it improve since the last time you criticized it? I believe that wasn't a game against Philadelphia. He didn't like it. He said, yeah, you know, I did criticize it. That was also with Cody Martin and Seth Curry on the floor. And so now, even if it is still bad, that was now we don't have them. And so I'm, I'm a little more understand that that was the tone. Like he felt it was a little more understanding the types of shots that they were taking because they didn't have just straight up veterans where Cody can move the ball. Like he is the break glass in case of emergency point guard and Seth Curry, just a smart basketball player that knows where the ball should go. And that, that hurts. Like as, as much as we want for sure, the stars, the young players to be out there, it also hurts when you don't have your role players out there. So, and, and I think people hear that from Clifford, and they hear us talking about it, and they say, well, that's excuse-making, excuse-making. No, it's nuance. It's understanding, and, and I, I totally buy what Clifford's saying here, which is that pl- especially players that get to Miles Bridges' level of play – where you're not you're not a fringe rotation player, right? Miles Bridges is going to be either you know a high level bench player for a good team or a starter on a mid level to bad team. When you get to that point, you got there because you have a particular set of skills, as Liam Neeson would say, and really and, what I went to, and and teams are counting on you to do those things, and and when you have to start playing outside of that, that's where. Uh, you that's where you get into trouble as a player, and that's where the team gets into trouble when they have to depend on that. And so I don't think it's excuse-making to say that, you know, Miles Bridges' efficiency issues have been because there haven't been playmakers on the floor. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a fact. But then what you have to ask yourself as an organization is are you, how much money are you willing to risk on the idea that if you insert good playmaking alongside of him, that all of that stuff will get figured out. Because look, this team is trying their best to avoid bad basketball habits, but they're being built by virtue Hmm. of not having like a functional offense. And so, you know, that's all I would say when they're making that evaluation on Bridges in particular, because a lot of, of, he's unrestricted free agent. A lot of folks are going to come and make offers and the Hornets can come over top of that offer. But it's going to be a big risk if they do that to say, hey, well, Miles Bridges turned into the player that we thought he was going to be like two years ago that he didn't get a chance to show if he could be this season. It's a big roll of the dice, a lot of money. 
It really is. We'll see how they operate. All right, that'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. Make your next listen Locked On, uh, their 24-7 streaming channel, because we have one. It's the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Have a great rest of your weekend. Hopefully we don't have any more people that are shut down for the rest of the season, and we'll be back to recap it if it does happen on Monday.